So I actually went to a couple of friends of mine, a guy named Kwame Yanni, uh, who actually officiated my wedding ultimately, <laughs> um, and a young lady named April Lundy. And I was like, hey, let's start this company. Maybe we can start our own production company. And they were both totally, you know, open to it. And then April actually brought in two other young ladies to work with, to be a part of the company with us. I used to direct music videos and uh, I met Tracy uh, on a plane. That was the first time that I met her. We were flying from Atlanta to uh, Jamaica to do a video for Shinehead. And yeah, uh, it was an experience. <laughs> it was definitely, it was definitely an experience. Just that, just, just that, that plane ride, you know, like, uh, I'd never met anybody like Tracy before. Uh, and she, uh, was obviously somebody with a whole lot of energy and, um, a vision for herself. And, you know, that you were part of that vision. If you were sitting next to her, then you were, you were part of that story. Like I was in Tracy's movie. Tracy was not in my movie up until that point. I thought, you know, this is my movie. And then I met Tracy, I was like, no, nah, this is Tracy's movie. <laughs> I was hired to work on a project um, as a production assistant or office PA, I believe, and Tracy was producing. And she was just really nurturing and um, we just clicked initially. I don't even remember, like there was not a breaking in process. Um, we just clicked. She was um, really nice, productive. I kind of, she was also, um, to me, I looked at her as a mentor at the time, um, but I found her to be industrious and driven and personable and um, kind of blazing her own path. And I admired that. Kwame had written a script called Strange Fruit. So we all collectively decided like, let's call the company Strange Fruit. We thought the name was so cool and catchy and dope. We know what it meant. And we were very familiar with the Billie Holiday song. We were just like, wanted to call the company and yeah so from me from my absence of producing <laughs> with rico uh strange fruit ultimately was birth and we it went well it was going good we had we were working trying to find some video directors developing other ideas and projects and i was also doing some other work with so so deaf and at the time interestingly enough while I was at So So Deaf, this young man named Jeff Bird had reached out to Jermaine Dupree because he was making a movie and he had the actors like Richard T. Jones and Sally Richardson and Robin Gibbons and Tretch from Naughty by Nature all agreeing to be a part of the film and they were supposed to be shooting in a couple of weeks, but the investor pulled out. So he was speaking to Jermaine in hopes that he would give him the money for the project. And I was talking to uh, basically Jermaine's executive team and it just looked like it wasn't really gonna happen. And I kind of was like, I think I was put on the phone with the guy to kind of tell him that they weren't gonna do it. But he sent me a link, he sent me, not a link, cause we didn't have links back then. So he sent me a DVD copy of his short that he created. And it was really good. And the script was good for his film, which was called The Book of Love. So I said, okay, exactly how much money do you need? He said $250,000. And one of the uh, young ladies, D'Angela Steed, who was a part of our company, her husband played football at the time. So I went back to my partners at Strange Root and said, hey, this guy has the script. He has all these actors attached. Um, he's ready to go, like they're supposed to be filming in a couple of weeks, and he only needs $250,000, do we think we could get the money? And um, D'Angela and her husband said, yeah. Well, she said, I can ask my husband, maybe he'll invest, but will you be going to LA? Because we can't just give people the money. We have to have someone watching our money and making sure these people are making a movie. And so I was like, yeah, cool, I'll go. Um, and so they agreed to give the money, I am put on a plane to LA with my child and I go there and, you know, put up in a hotel and show up at this office and see all these people are working and actually doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, so growing up as, as Tracy's son, it was always like, 
everything was a schedule thing because she was always working. So it was like from school to set or from here to the studio or vi vice versa. So I remember spending a lot of time on different sets and sleeping on a lot of couches. So being on set became like this comfortable atmosphere that I eventually got used to and enjoyed and loved. And I got to see as at an early age the different aspects of this, like the lighting department, it's this department, it's this department. So I got to got kind of see different pieces of the whole big picture or the big puzzle. We ultimately needed more money and uh, Wanda Shelley, who's a really good friend of mine, she was also married to a football player. I asked her, which she may be interested in investing. And it was kind of funny because she read the script and was like, it's okay. And then I said, well, we need the money because we have to film and we have to finish the uh, editing. And she was like, oh, so this is you, like, this is, you really believe in this? And I said, yes. And we, I was like, we need $50,000. And she said, okay, well, I'm investing because of you. Like, I want to see you live your dream. So, okay, fine. I'll talk to my husband. We'll give you the money. You know, I have been watching her over the years. Um, she was a video producer. And I know that she wanted to transition into film and television as well. So when she met Jeff Bird and she was working with April, Nia, um, D'Angela, um, they had this movie that Jeff was doing and it was called The Book of Love. And at that point, I think they needed a few more investors to finish the movie. So um, at that time, she was bright. She was vivid. You know, her confidence was everything. And now she was like thinking, okay, I want to make this transition to film and I thought, okay, that's great. Like you could do it because she had mastered, you know, the video, the music video side of things. So it was time for that to be next. So they gave 50,000 and one other person gave the other 50 and we were able to finish the film. And we actually ultimately sold the film to BET for a uh, double of what we made, actually almost three times what we made for it. And they, you know, distributed the film uh, Tracy's unique gift as a producer, I think, is to make it happen, right? That's like any 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 producer, like the, any producer that's worth anything, is a person that no matter what, it's just they're just gonna make it happen. And uh, you know, Tracy and I have been through some very interesting situations where we just had to, you know kind of laugh, shake it off and and just keep going on and make it make it happen. And and because she's she's so driven and because she's so uh, uh, confident in her ability to make it happen, shit just happens. So like that that confidence, that that ability to to not at any point, you know, it's like I'm not even gonna question whether or not this is gonna happen. It's gonna happen and this is how they're gonna do it is uh I think, you know, what she brings. Something happened. I don't exactly remember what it was, but basically, ultimately, the partners, well, Kwame, he quit early. Let's go back. He decided he didn't want to be in business with a whole bunch of women. So he left and we just remained friends. And then April, she just, she left for just personal reasons. So then I was left in the business with two people who I actually really didn't know because they were those that was April's connections and friends, but they had invested in one had invested in the film, and basically, so they were in, the, in Atlanta, I'm in LA, and ultimately they decide that they feel that the business is not going the way that they like it to be going, and they're not really happy with the fact that I'm out on the West Coast operating the business. Um, the way that I'm, I see best to operate it and decided that they no longer want to be in business with me, but they felt they should own the, the company because they had put up money for the company. Um, and that probably was like one of the um, most devastating things that happened to me. I had gone from, well, first of all, when I was working with Rico, I was building this idea. And I was working on it. I was doing the business plan and everything. And when I left, basically that idea came with me to make this company. So for someone to just say like, oh, okay, you no longer can be a part of your company. Just like, it shook me to my core, to be honest. It really, really did. And um, 
and that was my company so that was my job so then it was like what am I going to do and now I am in LA so I unraveled the things that we had together and actually started to look for work to just to sustain myself and um and I and I remember I like applied for a job as an executive assistant to the president of Lionsgate, and I was, my my credentials got me the interview. Um, but when I went for the interview, he just like he looked at me and he said, "You know, if you work for me, you'll never go on a set ever again in your life." And I said, "Don't you go to set?" And he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, why can't I just go with you?" And he's like, "That's not the job." The job is for you to answer the phone, work, manage my schedule. And I was like, but I could read scripts. Like, I can do more than that. And he said, no, but that's not the job. And so he said, look, I'm looking at your resume. And in reality, you're a producer, right? And I said, well, yeah, that's what I've been doing my career. And then he said, you know what producers do? And I said, what? He goes, they produce. And I was like, okay, yeah, of course. And he said, I mean, they make things happen. So I don't know what's going on with you and why you think you want a job and you no longer want to be a producer, but I can look at this resume and tell that you will never be happy. So I want you to go produce. And I didn't want to just be like, no, you don't understand. I just lost everything. I need a job. You know, I just looked at him and just said, okay, that must be a message. Let me just go, you know try to figure this out and um i remember going by the bookstore and i found this book called too busy not to pray um and i like keep that book <laughs> just as a refresher all the time and i also found a book called failing forward because at this point i felt like i needed to go forward but i didn't know how um and i remember wanda who was like my best friend she like called me and she was just like, you just need to come home. And at that time she was needing to come to Atlanta because she was just like, you have to like regroup and, and figure out what you want to do. But she was just like, you can't give up on your dream. And if you really need me to help you, like just come home and we'll figure this out. So I packed this up and I actually in between had gotten a job on a show that ended up shooting in Barcelona and they asked me to go back to Barcelona. So I'd taken Jacob for the summer to Atlanta and I'd, went to, I'd gone to Barcelona and I honestly had considered just moving because I mean literally I was so hurt I just like wanted to leave the country. Um, so. I went to Barcelona for the summer, came back, and I literally had found an apartment there, a school for my kid, everything. But when I came back, 9-11 um, happened. And then she's just like, you can't leave. It's like the world is falling apart, you know? Wanda offered that I could stay in Atlanta with her, actually. So I lived with her for a few months. And in, during the course of that time, she said, look, you can't let that thing and those people destroy your dream. Like, didn't you write the business plan for that company? Just start another one. 